सबमिट हुई थी एक प्रोजेक्ट प्रपोजल भी हमने सबमिट किया हुआ है एम पी आर आर ए के थ्रू एन आर आई टी ए को जो हमारी दो फैकल्टी ने मिलकर के बनाया है उनके कुछ सॉयल संबंधित परेशानियों को सॉल्यूशन ढूंढने के लिए आज के इस एक दिवसीय ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में तीन लेक्चर्स हैं पहला लेक्चर प्रोफेसर आकांक्षा त्यागी के द्वारा होगा जो यूज ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट फॉस्फोजिप्सम फॉर सॉइल स्टेबलाइजेशन एंड रोड कंस्ट्रक्शन टॉपिक के ऊपर होगा तो मैं आशा करता हूं कि इस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर्स के बाद आपके इंजीनियर्स को कुछ तथ्यों से अवगत हो पाएंगे जिसमें यहाँ पर जो आपकी रेवाइन सॉइल है या ब्लैक कॉटन सॉइल है उनमें अगर इसका कोई प्रयोग हो सकता है और उसका स्टेबलाइजेशन हो सकता है तो प्रोफेसर आकांक्षा त्यागी इन सभी चीज़ों पर प्रकाश डालेंगी दूसरा लेक्चर वेस्ट प्लास्टिक और एस बी एस पॉलीमर मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ बिटूमन के ऊपर है जो प्रोफेसर श्याम सुंदर रविंद्रनाथ प्रस्तुत करेंगे और ये भी एक इम्पॉर्टेंट लेक्चर है क्योंकि इसके अंदर हम वेस्ट का निस्तारण के ऊपर बात करेंगे और प्लास्टिक और पॉलीमर एक ऐसा वेस्ट है जिसका बहुतायत में हमारे पास उपलब्धता है और उसको अगर हम यहाँ यूज कर पाते हैं तो एक प्रॉब्लम हमारी जो निस्तारण की है वेस्ट की प्लास्टिक की जिसको कि जो बायोडिग्रेडेबल नहीं है वो भी हमारा हो पाएगा और अंतिम जो लेक्चर है वो प्रोफेसर प्रवीण कुमार देंगे जो न्यू मटेरियल्स फॉर रूरल रोड्स पर होगा आप को सबको विदित है प्रोफेसर प्रवीण कुमार काफी समय से रूरल रोड से जुड़े रहे हैं और वो आई रुड़की की तरफ से भी जो प्रिंसिपल टेक्निकल एजेंसी हैं या स्टेट टेक्निकल एजेंसीज हैं उसके कोऑर्डिनेटर हैं और रहे हैं तो ये एक पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर होगा जो फाइनली बिल्कुल जो थीम है आज के ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम की उसके ऊपर है और आखिर में हमने इसलिए रखा है कि सभी लोग उस समय तक हमारे साथ बंधे रहें और मैं आशा करता हूँ कि आज के तीनों लेक्चर से आप सभी इंजीनियर्स को कुछ लाभ मिलेगा और आप अपने अपने एरिया में उसका सदुपयोग कर पाएंगे इन सभी शब्दों के साथ मैं आपका फिर इस ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम में स्वागत करता हूं धन्यवाद ओवर टू यू विश्वजीत थैंक यू सर फॉर डिटेलिंग अबाउट दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस स्केड्यूल्स एंड द बेनिफिट्स वी आर गोइंग टू रिसीव सो now i request professor ask him who head of the department civil engineering iit roorkee to uh, welcome uh, us in this uh, webinar over to you professor uh, sir uh ghosh sir डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग एंड माई ओन पर्सनल बिहाफ आई वेलकम ऑल दार्टिसिपेंट्स ऑफ एम पी आर आर डी ए टू हैव ज्वाइंड फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर वन डे वेबिनार विच इज बींग ऑर्गेनाइज and it is my unique pleasure that iit roorkee the department of civil engineering which has already entered into a mou with it has now started to also interact at the professional level in order to look at the problems which are there from the uh, uh, from the agency side now i will just uh, take a few couple of minutes you know just to provide you the background of the department of civil engineering as you all know can you see the screen is the yes, we can we can see the screen you can put it on a full screen mode also sir yes i am trying to do it i am not getting the screen uh, yeah. okay otherwise this also you can okay you can, uh, uh, so, shorten down the left hand left side uh, part and make it uh it is showing preview on one preview okay i'm clicking on that 
but it is not coming maybe we can go ahead okay right so first of all let me uh, hello is the sound coming so i am not able to move the slides that is a problem just a moment we see why i am not able to adnan office mein office mein jaake dekh lega mute ho lega koi स्क्रीन पड़ा नहीं हो रहा है स्लाइड्स नहीं मूव कर रही है प्रॉब्लम इज दैट ओके सर उसमें आप अपना स्क्रीन शेयर कीजिए सर एप्लीकेशन शेयर ना करके स्क्रीन शेयर कीजिए प्लीज नो इट्स ओके इज इट कमिंग यस Okay, fine, fine. So this is the front view. Just to give you a view, this is the view of the Department of Civil Engineering, and below that is the iconic, what we call it now, is the James Thompson Building, which was the foundation of this particular institution way back in 1847, and this was the government notification which uh, was issued at that time, so that this particular college could be established. and one thing which is always said that we always owe our birth to the waters of mother ganges and without this river ganges there would have been no canal of that name and without the canal no college at rukki had been there so it is with blessings of the mother ganges that this particular institution came up at that particular time blossomed and now it's still at the uh, helm of the civil engineering education so this is the plaque that we have which gives the timeline of the department as it has grown and the institution has grown and now as it and when we look at the department as such the department of civil engineering has always maintained a very particular style of working and that is the freedom of academics and research and in order to do so we have divided the department academics and research into six specialization areas in the area of environmental engineering geomatics engineering geotechnical engineering hydraulics engineering structural engineering and transportation engineering now this particular this just gives us a view of the department as and this has been captured through our uav that we have in, within the department which all the various elements and the units that we are having and as a, at this particular point of time where the cursor is this is the place from where i am now talking so when i look at the human resources of the department as of now we have now having uh, since my last presentation which was there now we are having about 52 faculty members who are present there and we out of which 28 are professors 6 are associate professor and 18 are assistant professors plus we have distinguished faculty and adjunct faculty who are there plus dst inspired faculty at present we are having about nearly 600 plus students who are there along with mtech we also have a good share of foreign students both at the masters level and at the phd level and the department has about 49 such the students coming from different countries so when i look at some of the distinguished alumnus who are there they have occupied various important chairs chairman ugc secretary ugc directors of iits and nits chairman of indian railway board chairman delhi metro the rail corporation chairman of the high speed railway presidents of national technical societies chairman aict and the list is long so some of the things which makes this department unique is the continuous procurement of equipment and during the last financial year that was 2019 1920 about 5.5 crores of equipment was procured by the department in order to bolster the requirements of the academics and research resource there so when i look at the core competence you know we you can uh, see the 
manner in which the people, the faculty have been involved in research projects, consultancy projects and publications which are there. And we are always striving to move ahead in terms of different activities which are there. So this particular table not only shows the number of information, one of them which I would like to is the patents that we continue to uh, uh, apply. And as of now, in the last five years, about 11 patents have been awarded to the department. The Another aspect is the MOUs that we try to draw with various organizations which are there. And as of now, we are having about 18 live MOUs which are in uh, progress. And the one that is at the bottom, which is there, is the MPRRDA uh, logo that we are having, signifying the involvement. Now, when I look at the group there, these are just the snapshots of the equipment which are there. This is just to provide you an information that how we are going about. This is one particular equipment that I would like to discuss, you know, and that is the rotary drum composite. And we are collecting all the waste from the campus area and it is brought up here and after processing, it is converted into compost, which is now being utilized by the faculty and, and by the institution in their areas to nurture and fertilize the ground, which is there. So we do have the geomatics engineering and we do have a huge repertoire of equipments which are there. And at the bottom left, you can see the UAV. As of now, we have been able to purchase two UAVs which are there for collecting data and a lot of work in this particular area is being carried out. And these are some of the equipments that we have in the survey museum. This is one of the only museum of its kind in the country. And on the top right, the theodolite that you see is the theodolite which was actually used to provide the alignment of the Ganga Canal way back in the 18th century. And we are preserving all these equipments which are the area of geotechnical engineering looks at all the uh, aspects of soil and other aspects. So it may be of interest to you to see the type of equipment that we are having. So we are having cyclic triaxial tests. We are having polyaxial rock testing machines, which are there. Servo controlled large direct shear tests machine, UTM and heavy duty pull out apparatus equipment which are there. So this just provides you an idea as to the type of uh, services that we can provide to the agencies, which may be requiring very good uh, consultation efforts from us. The area of hydraulic engineering actually is one of the, the best labs that we have in the country. And it is a, uh, a lab which actually has maintained a lot of its uh, presence. The structural engineering group, by and large, has about 13 faculty, and there's a large number of material testing equipment that we are having, along with the structural analysis lab. And one of them of important is the fire testing laboratory that we are having, wherein we can uh, find out what are the impacts of fire. Another is the impact testing lab, wherein we study the behavior or projectiles which may be impacting the buildings which are there. So these are some of the uh, setups that on which the working is carried out. And then we have material durability lab for testing the durability of various materials which is there. And this is a lab which is sponsored by the uh, uh, NCCB, uh, NBCC, New Delhi. And we do have this particular facility available to us. The transportation engineering group, which is playing a major role today, has 10 faculty members uh, uh, who are there. And some of the major equipments which may be of interest to you and you may be aware, just to give you this particular idea that these are the equipments that we are having. And along with this, we can we can be having, uh, we do have a lot of traffic engineering equipment which are used to measure the traffic volumes and other aspects. We do have four, two distinguished visiting professors coming. 
and adjunct faculties which are there. So this is just a brief profile, and I hope I'll be I'm requesting Professor Rastogi to share this particular slide with you so that uh, you can utilize this information subsequently. Finally, I would like to record my thanks and appreciation to MPRDA for have entered into MOU and also to Professor Rajat Rasogi for organizing this one day webinar on new materials for rural roads. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ghos, for uh, presenting our own lab to everyone. Uh, and the snippets of uh, equipment that we have. Now I request uh, Sri Shashank Mishra, CEO of uh, MPRRDA Bhopal, to uh, give an introductory address to everyone. Uh, I welcome you all. First of all, I must thank IIT Roorkee and uh, MP Rural Road Academy for organizing this uh, webinar. Kaafi uh, se hum log सोच रहे थे कि हमको एक ऐसा सेशन ऑर्गेनाइज करना चाहिए विच वुड इंक्रीज द इंटेलेक्चुअल कैपेसिटी ऑफ आर इंजीनियर्स एंड आल्सो हेल्प अस विद द रिसर्च पार्ट एज ऑफ टुडे एमपीआरआरडीए ऑलमोस्ट हैंडल्स 1 लाख किलोमीटर ऑफ रोड्स सो अ मेजर पार्ट ऑफ मेंटेनेंस इज एन इशू हाउ टू मेंटेन दीस रोड्स इफेक्टिवली एंड इन अ वेरी कॉस्ट एफिशिएंट मैनर Besides, we are also uh, continuously dealing with the construction part. Construction part has its own challenges. How to make the roads, which are most durable as of today, we have the BT roads, uh, which is the general phenomena, which has a very standard specification, and uh, this BT uh, itself has a life span of six to seven years. How do we uh, better the life span of this uh, pavement? how do we have a better shoulder how do we have a better uh, subgrade material all these things are part of uh, research and uh, continuously we we have this uh, agenda of taking up 15% of the roads under new technology as of today uh, we are already using the plastic based material we are also using the cold uh, mixed technology but even these technologies have as of today uh, the technology which we have been using has been has become kind of uh, in existence for past 5 6 years and i think they also need a relook and uh, we need to come up with certain more uh, technology which are more efficient which will give us a better life span for the pavement for the shoulders for the uh, material below bt so with that intention in mind i had requested mprr mprra and uh, they in, they further requested iit rurki if we we can have this webinar this session wherein we can we can have this uh, exchange of information on or exchange of knowledge on new materials uh, uh, new construction technologies i also had placed a request for automation in the maintenance part i think uh, yeah, subsequently we will be taking up Uh, a webinar on that also but as of today uh, it is being concentrated on the new materials the use of plastic paste and how better we can uh, utilize these techniques to come up with more durable uh, asset construction uh, iit rurki has been our uh, partner for more than a year and uh, i'm thankful to them that they could have uh plan this webinar on those very aspects uh, which we require even today we have uh, almost 6000 kilometers of road in construction phase more than that in fact and uh, in coming year we may have uh, uh, more than 7000 of kilometers of road which will be taking up for construction uh, the dpr is in the preparation stage so it is a very apt moment that we are having this webinar right now because we are in the process of preparation of dpr it's something really clicks and we if we could proceed then uh, probably we can take up uh, such a technology in our uh, 15% innovative uh, uh, 
uh, space that we have so once again i uh, thank iit roorkee i thank nprra to have organized this webinar and uh, as i mentioned earlier i further look on to having a webinar on the automation part because as i've already mentioned we have almost a lack of kilometers to maintain and uh, up till now that has been a very manual thing the engineers visit they present their report and based on that the entire maintenance uh, uh, part is taken up i wanted it to be more automated uh, uh, it could be a machine based uh, machine learning based uh, te technique wherein the roads are uh, visited through a drone or something and the uh, reports are uh, analyzed based on machine learning and we could have a, a ready made solution for it so that is something which we which i am looking forward and once again i thank uh, both the academies over to you uh, mr vishwajit thank you thank you thank you sir uh, for uh, in introducing mprr da to us so so i think uh, no other question to so maybe no we can do sorry mere ko so i with this Mm, i request uh, professor rajat rostogi to take this uh, forward so uh, over to you rostogi sir okay thank you vishwajit so uh, um, now we have a sort of an introduction of uh, today's uh, activities which we are going to have uh, we will be starting with our first lecture shortly now professor akansha tyagi will be doing that i will again request uh, mr vishwajit to uh, uh, to take over from here and introduce the speaker and then uh, the speaker can uh, share the material and our session can start okay so uh, over to you vishwajit uh, thank you sir so uh, good morning ma'am uh, good morning am i audible to you yes ma'am okay so before beginning i'll just give a introduction to professor akhancha tyagi so he has uh, dr akhancha tyagi is an assistant professor at the department of civil engineering iit roorkee she earned her phd from the national university of singapore in 2018 she had her master from iit bombay in 2013 and graduated with gold medal in 2011 from gb pant university uh, of agriculture and technology she has also worked as geotechnical design engineer for a year at keller foundation private limited uh, singapore she is an associate member of american society of civil engineer member of international society for soil mechanics and geotechnical engineering and life member of indian geotechnical society she is also the young member liaison from india for the young member presidential group issmg her research interest include in situ ground improvement technique geotechnical constructions in over admixture stabilized soft soil spatial variability in and mixture stabilized ground and remediation of contaminated soils dr tyagi has published her research works in asc journal of geotechnical and environmental engineering geotechnic and elsewhere soils and foundation and had presented her work at the national and international platforms she is a journal uh, reviewer for asc journal of geotechnical and environmental engineering Ranger Acta Geotechnica and Techno Press Geomechanics and Engineering. So, with this introduction, I welcome uh, I welcome Professor Akansha Tyagi to uh, present her uh, uh, slide. So, over to you, uh, Professor Tyagi. Okay. Uh, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, Vishwajit, am I audible? Is the volume okay? 
Yeah, fine, ma'am. We can hear you. And and can can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. I think uh, it should be full screen mode actually. So. Yes, yes. I'm trying to do that. So just a minute. Uh, is it yes, fine now? Yes, ma'am. It's fine. Okay. So first of all, I would like to take this, uh, you know, uh, opportunity to thank MPRRA. and um, iit durki to give me this opportunity especially professor rajat rastogi and um, so without any further delay i would uh, uh, start my presentation so uh, you know that uh, since the this one day workshop is on the use of new materials for rural roads so uh, today i'll be presenting on uh, use of industrial waste phosphorus gypsum for the soil stabilization and road construction so uh, in this presentation i'll be telling you about what is phosphor gypsum and um, uh, is it a threat or a resource and what are the you know possible issues associated with the phosphor gypsum or um, then i'll be talking about the feasibility of usage of phosphor gypsum uh, in the road construction on the soil stabilization or as you say subgrade stabilization uh, i'll be talking about geotechnical and leachability aspects uh, within this context and uh, then i'll be discussing about possible applications without with or without additional admixtures of phosphor gypsum uh, so, so like uh, like around the world uh, people have you know taken up research on this kind of material and uh, they have tried to find out the use of phosphor gypsum as a soil stabilizer or as a road base material so i'll be discussing uh, over these aspects and then at the end i'll be um, you know give summary and concluding this presentation so let us start so uh, first of all uh, what is phosphor gypsum so um, phosphor gypsum is basically you know is it's calcium sulfate and it is generated from phosphoric acid plants so phosphoric acid plants um, are basically they can be found in every country um, across the world because uh, they are basically used up by the agriculture industry so phosphoric acid plants uh, in i'll be also talking about the scenario worldwide in india later in my slides so basically this phosphor gypsum is uh, you know is a by product of a uh, phosphoric acid plants which is uh, produced by the reaction of rock phosphate with the sulfuric acid okay and uh, this uh, phosphor gypsum can be generated either in the dihydrate form which is caso4.h2h2o or hemihydrate form like caso4.h2o uh the quality and the quantity of this phosphor gypsum the type of the phosphor gypsum uh which is going to be generated by these phosphor generate uh, phosphoric acid plants it depends upon the quality of the phosphate rock and also the procedure by which the phosphoric acid is produced and uh, it is known to consist small amounts of silica quartz and you know unreacted phosphate phosphate rock and it is also uh, known that it it has heavy metals such as arsenic cadmium chromium mercury and fluoride traces of radioactive material like radium or uranium so uh, uh, this is a basically a very brief uh, you know introduction of phosphor gypsum and uh, you will be surprised to know that you know for every ton of phosphoric acid around 5 tons of phosphor gypsum is produced as a by product so what you are seeing here now on your screens is not actually a hill or a mountain these are actually you know stock piles of phosphor gypsum you know it's being accumulated over the years and uh, it's a substantial source of industrial waste and uh, Uh, just to let you know the idea of the magnitude of this stockpile you know about a billion tons of phosphor gypsum is known to have accumulated in florida alone and not only in uh, florida you know not only uh, it's 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 a menace is a is a source uh, it's a problem 
in uh, European countries, in China, in India. So uh, in all these countries, you know, which have phosphoric acid plants, this is the problem. So uh, what is the problem basically associated with this kind of you know stockpile basically the handling and management of phosphogypsum is a major problem in a phosphoric acid plants and because uh, as i told you you know for every ton of phosphoric acid five tons of phosphogypsum is produced as a byproduct so large volumes are uh, um, produced and therefore large areas are required to dump this material and if it is disposed in the open yards then um, it's it's in direct contact with the environment and it may pose threat to the environment you know uh, so basically what may be the kind of problems that you know if if it is stacked there and then the dust uh, because of the dust particles you know these dust particles may be carried by the air and you know they can mix in nearby streams or rivers or ponds they mix with the uh, water they are threat to the aquatic life and also to the ecosystem and to the human beings who are you know using that water and also even if there is no dust you know you, uh, you might have uh, be aware of the term leaching you know what is leaching basically uh, when there is a rain you know or when this kind of material in comes in contact with the water then the heavy metals they tend to leach into the ground water table they, they tend to <clears throat> mix enter into the ground water table from this material and once they enter into the ground water table then it's a, a major uh, uh, you know serious environmental um, hazard and it it has made uh, it has serious health concerns so basically these are the problems associated with the phosphogypsum and it is being faced by um, many of the countries around the world you know that uh, this is material it is over there dumped over there and you know stacks are being created now what to do with this type of material and uh, to just let you know about like um, currently you know phosphogypsum is being used for building materials like gypsum boards and uh, in some countries it is used to make tiles bricks and uh, also cement manufacturing industries and uh, it has been also used by for the production of mortar and concrete uh, as fertilizers in the agriculture sector and a very small percentage is also being utilized for soil stabilization in the construction industry in some countries but uh, still only 15% of the world for phosphogypsum production is being utilized so about 85% of the phosphogypsum is still you know waiting there to to get used by the um, engineers or by the construction industry so basically uh, if i tell you what is the scenario in india you know in india there are 11 number of phosphoric acid manufacturing units and these are located in seven states namely andhra pradesh gujarat kerala maharashtra odisha tamil nadu and west bengal and uh, these majority of phosphoric acid plants in the country are based on wet process as you know being written in central pollution control board of india report uh, from 2014 and it is in the form of dihydrate which i already told you that is cso4.2h2o for the production of phosphoric acid so according to central pollution control board of india 2014 the annual production of phosphogypsum in the country is estimated as 11 million tons so this is the annual production of the phosphogypsum in our country so basically if you are going to use this product it it will come for free so in india uh, 3.5 million tons of phosphogypsum annually is being reported to be utilized by the cement industry ceramic industry and as fertilizers by the agriculture sector but still you know for soil stabilization and for the road construction there are very limited uh, studies that i am going to discuss today somebody has unmute his mic so uh, i would request everyone to please mute your mics okay uh, please mute your mics 
So basically, you know, uh, uh, you'll be interested to know that uh, on 14th October last year, 2020, uh, the United States Environmental Protect, uh, Protection Agency, it actually approved the use of phosphogypsum in the road construction. So this became a, a news for the entire world and uh, for the industries who know who are involved in the um, this uh, phosphogypsum product. And uh, because um, you know, as uh, written in the reports, the uh, U.S. government thinks that it's a win-win sit uh, situation because, you know, the stacks uh, of phosphogypsum are being there, you know, and it's a kind of abundant product, free product. And for the road construction, we are using materials which are very costly and this is already inexpensive. So it has approved the use of phosphogypsum in the road construction. However, some agencies, you know, they have also, um, they are, saying that since this uh, phosphogypsum it has you know heavy metals or some traces of radioactive metals how we are going to use it and may, will it pose health hazard but then you know that is why there is research for because we have to know that okay this material has heavy metal but what is the amount of the heavy metal you know should it be considered hazardous or non-hazardous or even if there is a uh, uh, heavy metals there or some kind of you know um, met, uh, some harmful chemicals are there then are they exposed to the environment directly you know and uh, these are some questions which uh, I'm we are going to look into this presentation and uh, the third thing is uh, I talked about leaching so if this material you know is not directly exposed to the environment then um, or if it is exposed to the environment, then we have to see that, you know, uh, what is the amount of leaching and what is the um, what are the he heavy metal concentration in the leachates. So all these things we have to keep in mind when we use this kind of material for the construction purposes. Sorry, so for for the 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 yeah. So, so you need to can you please okay so uh, i would like to discuss about the feasibility of phosphogypsum usage okay and first we'll look at the geotechnical and the leachability aspects so, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the screen, you can see that on the right hand side. So this material looks like, you know, a uh, like like this, as you see on the uh, picture on the right on the screen. And according to the Central Pollution Control Board of India, you know, it's a gray colored damp fine gray powder. And uh, it may be it may be classified as a silt or silty sandy material with a maximum size range between 0.5 mm and 1 mm. The majority of the particles are finer than 75 micron and the specific gravity is pro, uh, between 2.3 to 2.6. The maximum dry bulk density is 1.47 to 1.67 gram per cc based on the standard Proctor compaction. And uh, the gypsum cake after filtration usually has a free moisture content of about 25 to 30 percent. And the permeability is of the order 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter per second. If I look, look at the, the phosphogypsum studies in like different parts of the world, like, uh, you know, Greece and China and all other parts of the world, then they also, you know, have similar kind of, uh, they define it similar like sandy silt, poorly, uh, poorly graded silty sand, silty soil, A4 type. And uh, the specific gravity is from 2.27 to 2.4. The natural water content is 25 to 30 percent. The maximum dry unit weight is for the. Please, please mute yourself. I would request you to mute mute yourself. So uh, uh, the maximum dry unit weight from the standard proctor is found to be for uh, for the compacted specimen of the phosphogypsum is found to be 1.26 gram per cc and 1.44 gram per cc for modified proctor. And uh, here you can see the optimum moisture content for both the standard proctor and the modified proctor tests. And it's a non-plastic material. 
and um, the coefficient of permeability is um, you know 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 5 and um, uh, and the high effective stress it may the permeability may go to 10 to the power minus 7 cm per second uh so ucs uh of this compacted specimen of phosphogypsum may reach as high as you know as 5 mpa but this is the compacted specimen but again you know uh this um these ucs you know it depends upon uh the type of the phosphogypsum the from which source you have obtained this phosphogypsum is it a dihydrate or is it a hemihydrate or uh, since it's a compacted specimen that also depends upon the you know kind of a compaction you have done so if i look at now you know i just uh, want to see here if, if you see the grain size distribution again then this is uh, you know classified as a silty sand or you know sandy silt and a4 type and if i look at the highway research board uh, soil classification groups then a4 type is generally you know it is defined as factory uh, stability when dry loss of stability when wet or by frost action and it is it is uh, defined as a good to poor subgrade material so uh, i mean it is not actually silt only by classification by the grain size distribution it 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 is classified as a kind of silty material but actually since the mineralogy is different so it was it will not behave like silt but the thing is um, uh, maybe uh since um, uh, this this kind of material may also have different drying and wetting you know characteristics because some material what they do they uh, they have good strength when they are dry in the dry form and when they are wet form they lose they tend to lose their strength and then there are settlement problems and collapsible uh, collapse collapse problems so uh this uh, uh, so from this preliminary you know primary look at the material we can think of these uh, you know we can guess something about this material but actually as we go forward into the presentation you know i'll be discussing about uh, uh, more detailed studies so uh, if we look at the chemical composition of the phosphogypsum it is uh, from the cri annual report the um, and if you can see the a uh, major amount is for the calcium oxide it is 76.25% and then so3 is 21.75% now uh, so this so3 is a sulfur trioxide of 21.75% may also be uh, some kind of you know concern because for the embankment construction generally the concentration uh, um, this this exceeds the concentration amount which is specified in some of the codes but again you know uh, if i look on the leachability tests you know this is the chemical composition of the material the material has but then if this material it comes in contact with the environment then what happens like will will these heavy metals uh, be leached or will get out from this material in the layman term will they get out from this material and they mix they, they will mix into the groundwater table so this you can test by the leachability test okay so uh, i think this study is from the greece and uh, uh, so i would say that in india you know there are not many studies uh, crri did a study some study and i am going to discuss that but the published reports are not uh, abundant so i in this presentation i'll be discussing about the various studies uh, which are done for all uh, for phosphogypsum all around the world so uh, this is basically from greece and these people they did leachability tests for uh, you know um, phosphogypsum and they found that actually you know uh, although there there were traces of arsenic barium uh, uh, cadmium chromium copper molybdenum but the quantity is actually uh, less than the limit of hazardous materials and in fact uh, in this kind in this paper you know they defined it as a non hazardous they they put it in the non hazardous group because if you see the limits Uh, uh then it is well below uh in numbers the numbers are well below these you know these numbers which are written over here under the hazardous category the only concern that was put forward that the fluorides are uh, more in number you know so this is 
unstabilized phosphogypsum this is i'm not talking about phosphogypsum mixed of any kind of soil or mixed any kind of other mixture like lime cement or fly ash but this is i am just talking about a phosphogypsum as a material as a singly material so as a phosphogypsum you know they found that okay fluorides are a um, little bit higher on the limit as uh, but it's still uh, lower than the hazardous um, wastes so um, that is why um, i mean there is a hope or uh, i think that there is a good uh, potential of this kind of material to be used for road construction and uh, this uh, if if in the cpcb report you know you will find that uh, the boards are already being used for the uh, office areas for the residential areas and the radioactivity is found to be much less so uh, since these are already being used for you know for the boards for the uh, buildings so may because you know in uh, when we use this kind of a material for the construction purposes then uh, if say for example we are going to make a subgrade out of this material this is not going to be in the direct contact with the human being until and unless uh, rainfall comes and you know it mixes it and then there is a leachability thing happening and then these uh, metals they go into the groundwater so basically that is why not only the geotechnical aspect is important when you are using a new material for construction you know not only strength is important uh, as civil engineers we always talk about uh, strength like cbr test and you know we talk about um, uh, ucs test but we often you know uh, don't think in the direction of this environmental thing which is also very important aspect so uh, basically leachability is also important when we are using new materials in the construction uh, purpose okay so now i'll be discussing about uh, detail you know the applications of phosphogypsum as a geo material uh, so what is a geo material so uh, i define uh, a geo material like a soil kind of material you know which can be uh, used as uh, you know uh, if, since we defined this as a silty sand or sandy shale so basically it's a, a soil kind of material or an admixture which can be used as a soil stabilizer or a road based material so first i will be uh, explaining you uh, like some of the studies in which phosphogypsum was used as a soil stabilizer so basically uh, let us uh, go in this study you know so two types of soil were taken so one type of soil was a silty soil and another kind of soil was a uh, clay of high plasticity so this is mh and this is ch okay and uh, so uh, the soil one is a silt and soil two is a clay of high plasticity and you know pg phosphogypsum and cement was used as admixture i think someone has unmuted his mic so please mute to uh to reduce the disturbance okay okay please mute your mics please check your mics and mute so um basically they did a pre primary study you know and uh, the group of researchers they did primary study for maximum dry unit weight uh, against the cement content and cement plus phosphogypsum content so uh, basically in the x axis if you are seeing this 10% so one study is for the cement and the another study is for cement and the phosphogypsum and here you know 50 50% of cement and phosphogypsum is being used so basically the cement is being replaced by 50% of the phosphogypsum and uh, just to summarize you know in this kind of uh, study they found that the maximum dry unit weight is in increased for the clay type of soil and the optimum moisture content it decreased for the clay type of soil when they mixed a phosphogypsum and cement and uh, the results when they mixed cement and the results when they mixed 50% of the phosphogypsum were quite you know close to each other the other thing to notice from this study is uh, it was found that silts on silt uh, the effect on the maximum dry unit weight was not as much as it was found to be uh, you know for the clay type of soil so clay type of soil is more responsive to the addition of the phosphogypsum or even to the cement i should say 
then uh, they they uh, they used phosphogypsum and fly ash instead of cement they used fly ash and they found that you know the maximum dry unit weight it decreased due to the addition of fly ash and the phosphogypsum for both the soils but for the optimum moisture content it decreased uh, you know uh, in uh, like by a great number for the clay type of soil now why the maximum dry unit weight decreased when we add fly ash and the phosphogypsum or only fly ash if you see you know even if you are replacing fly ash by 50% you know the results are quite i mean close so the thing is you know there is the fly ash has lower specific surface surface gravity and that is why the maximum dry unit weight it decreases when we uh, you know add fly ash to the clay type of soil or facility type of soil uh but if we look at the you know strength aspect uh unconfined compressive strength as we define so for both the type of soils the strength increased and uh even if you use cement or cement or if you use cement plus phosphogypsum you know the results are quite closer so the the good thing about the encouraging thing about this uh, primary study is you know see if this is 15% so 7.5% is cement 7.5% is phosphogypsum and still you know it is comparable with the result when you are using 15% of cement so the results are quite close and uh, uh, for the fly ash and phosphogypsum also the similar results are obtained by the group of researchers and uh, so uh, this is a quite encouraging result uh the central road research institute of india uh, also has uh, you know published some of the results in its 2011 to 2012 report but uh, i couldn't see much of the published literature although but in this uh, study you know they stabilized uh, the soil with the phosphogypsum and phosphogypsum lime separately uh, they found that the addition of the phosphogypsum the ucs increased but only to 20% of the phosphogypsum and after that it decreased so they defined this phosphogypsum percentage as 20% however you know in the later slides you will get to know why why this you know there is ucs decreases i mean in this report it was uh, i mean uh, some of the reports you will see that you know you will add some admixture the strength increase in and then that decreases so basically it it has to do something what happens uh, with the uh, you know reaction taking place within the soil mixtures or admi soil admixture admixture um, uh, uh, thing so um, for the soil and the phosphogypsum mixes you know none of the specimens for this particular study it qualified the durability test criteria though for the soil and the phosphogypsum mixes so uh, i would say that uh, this thing also it will depend on the type of the soil as we saw in the earlier slide which type of the soil you are using and whether you are using only phosphogypsum alone or, or you are going to use lime or you know other type of admixture so based on the laboratory studies of crri it was uh, you know uh, proposed that phosphogypsum may be used as a fill material or in subgrade or sub base layer of a road pavement but uh, as uh, it was also written in the crri report that you know there is a need for large scale field studies for monitoring the performance because still there are no large scale field studies for uh, use of this material uh, especially in india you know in in us you will find out some of the test roads have al already been in use in poland also some of the test roads have already been in use i will also discuss one of the study from the poland and uh, but in india still uh, i mean to my knowledge uh, um, there is no as as of monitored study of use of phosphogypsum so basically uh, what i was saying uh, in you know earlier slide you know the 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 type of the phosphogypsum also affects the strength so uh, this is the unconfined compression strength in mpa and here is the time curing time in days and it was found by the uh, researchers and this is the research study from brazil uh, and the thing is they found that you know 
for two types of phosphogypsum dihydrate and hemihydrate they found that dihydrate phosphogypsum it has less strength when added to a soil or it, with any kind of admixture like lime or cement while hemihydrate uh phosphogypsum which is cso4.2h2o this form of phosphogypsum has very very high strength so it can go up to you know say 10 mpa and uh, uh the dihydrate is uh, it's it's up to 1 or 2 mpa but again it depends on the uh type of application you want to this, uh, use this kind of material if for you are use if it is uh 1 mpa is okay then it's fine i mean you don't have to uh, go for very high strengths but for uh, more strengths it may be noted that you know uh, hemihydrate phosphogypsum uh, is known to have uh, higher strength than the dihydrate and uh, why is is it is it so because you know it has to do with the microstructural characteristics so many a times you know as civil engineers we just focus on the mechanical characteristics on the strength characteristics like strength increases decreases you know and all these things but we tend to forget about the microstructural characteristics you know why is it happening you know if i if i'm adding some admixture it is increasing and then suddenly it's decreasing why it's happening you know it has to do with the microstructure it has to do with the chemical reactions which are taking place so the the thing is you know it is uh, it is seen that you know when this uh, phosphogypsum it is added to the cement or uh, uh with this uh, admixture hi the hydration product cao al2o3 6h2o from the portland cement it you know it combines with the sulfate ion so42 minus which is ionized from the phosphogypsum and it forms these needle like needle like minerals called atringite so what this atringite thing does is basically it's a expensive mineral and it develops in the presence of sulfate calcium and aluminium compounds and it tend to you know fill the voids spaces so at first what atringite does is it fills the void spaces and it forms uh, you know it gives strength to this material but if you keep on adding more phosphogypsum then what will happen the the thing is these needle like uh, minerals they will increase and they will form kind of groups as i will show you in the later slides and then because it is expensive mineral you know the crack may occur so that is why the optimum dosage of phosphogypsum is required in the earlier slide i told you that you know dihydrate phosphogypsum it has less strength than the hemihydrate on the left hand side you are seeing this uh, microstructural uh, you know this these are the scanning electron microscope images so basically here you can see uh, you know minerals so uh, the dihydrate um, this is the dihydrate phosphogypsum with the cement and this is the hemihydrate phosphogypsum with the cement now just by looking at these you know you will find that yes this structure is actually you can find voids spaces and you know this structure is less porous and it is more uniform more homogeneous and that is why it has high strength okay and similar thing was seen when this phosphogypsum was added to lime and uh, in in this case also similar thing was happened like atringite formed but uh, the thing is atringite forms a kind of network at first and you know uh, this increases the strength but after a certain period of time when if the if this atringite formation is too much it is excess of atringite then you know that is a reduction of strength so uh, same thing happened with the dihydrate uh, phosphogypsum with lime and here this is the hemihydrate phosphogypsum with lime and please note that these studies are without uh, soil for this particular uh, slides that i'm showing two three slides these are without the soil so this is just hemihydrate phosphogypsum with lime so you can see that this is more you know this is denser this is more homogeneous and that is why more strength is there in this kind of uh, product but still if you look at the strengths you know for the dihydrate phosphogypsum also if you are looking at subgrade or you, just as for embankment kind of material you know the strength is not that bad it is 1 mpa so uh, 
But if you are looking for a base material, then basically you have to go for higher strengths. So these things have to be kept in mind. And uh, hemihydrate phosphogypsum is interacts better with the cement than with the lime. It is uh, seen and it results in less porous and more homogeneous structure. So even uh, it was seen that with the cement, you know, it had more strength as compared to lime. Now, there are more studies for different types of soils. And uh, there is uh, another study which I'm going to discuss. And this is for the loess stabilization. Now, what is loess? Loess is kind of, you know, silty soils and this the problem with the lowest are they there is um, they have a good strength when they are dry and but they have really bad strength they perform uh, really bad when there is rainfall or when they are wet you know so uh, another thing is the erosion problem associated with the lowest type of soils so basically uh, these type of soils you know the study was done uh, by these researchers Gu and Chen and this is a very recent study you know published in 2020 only and uh, in, in this study it was seen that you know uh, we know that you know when we add cement it's almost a linear increase in the strength of loess stabilized uh, cement stabilized loess but uh, they also used phosphogypsum uh, plus 10% uh, cement okay so they they picked up this 10% and they added 2% 5% 10% and 15% of phosphogypsum and what they see is you know if you see the early strength if you look at these early strength this is 3 day 7 day and 28 day again 3 day 7 day 28 day so if you look at 3 day and 7 day strength if you are adding more phosphogypsum, you know, the early strength is decreased, has decreased. And if you look at 28 day strength, if you are if you are using 2% phosphogypsum, you know, the 28 day strength is quite high as compared to when you are only using, you know, 5% cement. And if you are using 5% phosphogypsum plus 10% cement, it is actually higher than with only 10% cement. But if you're adding 10% phosphogypsum and 15% of phosphogypsum, the strength has again lowered for lowest type of soil. So again, I would like to that you don't uh, when I am, uh, you know, showing discussing the results, you always keep in mind, you know, the background, which type of soil this study is. So basically, it was seen that, you know, the addition of phosphogypsum lowered the early strength and the uh, the uh, the the, the reason was the soluble phosphates. It include the P2O5 and it's it's in the unreacted phosphogypsum. And it, it forms a thin film around the cement and it it, it you know it lowers down the, the uh, reaction of the cement. Basically, it the setting time of the cement is prolonged. So when I say the early strength is decreased or it's not high, but the, you know, the final strength, 28 day strength is higher. The thing is, basically, the setting time of the cement is getting prolonged. But at the same time, you will see the strength has increased. And it is because the participation of phosphogypsum, it promotes the generation of the CSH gel, you know, and uh, it is again due to the uh, what mineral I already told you, the itringite, you know, the itringite formation, the needle like itringite, it forms a kind of framework and it fills the inner voids of the samples and it increases the strength. But again, if there is excess of itringite and if it is not able to react with the cement, you know, then this excess of itringite, you know, it will form excess of um, uh, uh, volume expansion and suddenly the that is why the strength has reduced now they also studied the uh, what happens when you add fly ash you know the fly ash when you add with the 10 percent cement and 5 percent phosphogypsum so in this study as you see uh, on this slide you know bottom left then you will see that uh, the strengths are higher as you compare when you are only using the cement but suddenly when you, you, you are using 25% of fly ash, you know, then the strength has reduced. So the thing is, it is found that uh, this, 
but if you see these strengths you see these are higher than uh, here and this strength is also higher than when you are only using cement or only using phosphor gypsum and cement basically you know fly ash is a kind of a uh, you know material which needs to be activated you know and uh, basically the slow activity of fly ash it requires to be activated by the so4 to minus uh, which is present in the phosphor gypsum so basically this phosphor gypsum is helping the fly ash you know to provide the strength to to increase the activity of the fly ash but however when there is excess of the fly ash it is not getting reacted with the phosphor gypsum means only 5% of phosphor gypsum was good with the 20% of fly ash for this type of soil but for more fly ash you know it is getting unreacted and since fly ash is known to have low cohesion between the soil particles that is why the strength has reduced so basically that, that is why the you know the research is uh, important and uh then this group of researchers they also added quick lime you know uh, to the 10% cement 5% phosphor gypsum and 10% fly ash and you know if you look at these results there is not much change to these uh results and you will see that the strength is almost equal basically what quick lime is doing you know the participation of quick lime is actually it's known to neutralize the ph value of materials both the fly ash and phosphor gypsum are acidic materials so basically quick lime is alkaline and it provides the environment to these materials to react and this they, they it, it provides a good environment so so when quick lime is added you know there is a substantial increase uh, even with the 3% quick lime there is a substantial increase in the strength but if 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 it is more then also i mean i mean 3% looks sufficient from this study so again you know these group of researchers they they uh, again they looked into the microstructure to answer these questions and what i have already uh, i think briefed that if you see these needle like particles you know this is these are itrangite which are formed due to phosphor gypsum and portland cement reaction taking place and this is chs cs gels and these itrangite you know they wrap the cs gels and the soil particles and the fly ash particles and uh, with the 5% phosphor gypsum and the 10% cement but if it is 10% phosphor gypsum and 10% cement then it is seen that you know the itrangite is quite the like it it kinds of a formed um, you know um, a, 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 it it collects there and it's it's unreacted phosphor gypsum and basically since it's expansive mineral then there is a crack formation over here you can see a crack near itrangite and something same happens uh, some uh, the, the the thing is we uh, we i was mentioning in the last slide about the fly ash is that if you see this 10% cement plus 5% phosphor gypsum plus 15% fly ash so in 7 days you know fly ash you you can see sphere like particles of fly ash you know they are unreacted particles and then there is itrangite formation over the you know csa gel and it is covering and providing kind of network and up to 28 days now the fly ash phosphor gypsum chs chs gel has formed and the net has provide a wrapping kind of a wrapping around the soil minerals and csa gel and it kinds of you know gives kind of good strength and that is why when we added fly ash you know this this uh, you know this these kind of ingredients they look quite good when you see like this this is quite a dense uh, formation of um, uh, you know um admixture has formed binder has formed dense formation of binder has formed so uh, that is why microstructural characteristics are quite important you know in understanding the behavior of admixtures uh, when you stabilize uh, soils so uh, as i say the type of soil is also very important and uh, some researchers they studied which type of soil is more responsive and they found that you know the clay type of soil is more responsive than the silty type of soil in terms of the strength 
in terms of the chemical reactions that are taking place and in even in clay you know kaolinite mineral if it is present there then it is quite responsive however in this study mont marillonite was not studied so it will be very very interesting to see if uh, you know this phosphogypsum uh, like um, can be useful for the expansive type of soils or kind of black cotton soils so uh, but up to now there is not much good published literature on this so uh, now i'll go towards as uh, like applications of phosphogypsum as road based material so uh, in fact in in previous studies also uh, i mean it was not only soil stabilizer i was also talking about without soil and only as binders in the form of uh, you know um, so i mean but in this section you know i'll be discussing more about you know focusing more on the road based material kind of studies so basically uh, characteristics of lime phosphogypsum and fly ash mixtures was uh, studied and uh, in this one you know it was seen that phosphogypsum and fly ash was added 50% and modified lime and this in this research you know the modified lime they are saying they used lime and some kind of uh, additive you know and uh, i think um, mostly it should be the uh, you know alkali activator which is generally used for fly ash so but they didn't mention it but they said it is a modified lime so uh, with uh, the quick lime with some kind of editor so they have found that you know with the uh, 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 addition of the lime actually the strength increased up to 10% of lime and if you see the uncompressive strength with the 8% modified lime and they increase the content of the phosphogypsum you know uh, because they are using phosphogypsum and fly ash mixtures and uh, they uh, they found that up to 30% of the phosphogypsum and uh, when they are using 30% uh, phosphogypsum around 70% you know fly ash and 8% uh, modified lime then the compressive strength is the highest and when they compare it with the other uh, you know conventional admixtures like um, this is the cement soil this is the slake lime soil and this is the cement lime soil this lime phosphogypsum fly ash you know it it's it's found to have the highest strength as compared to other conventional admixtures and uh, like lime fly ash so you see this is the lime fly ash and the lime fly ash phosphogypsum it it has very high uh, strength and when they added it to the granular soil so um, which is generally you know cement granular soil or lime fly ash granular soil generally are used as base materials so uh, when they use this lime phosphogypsum fly ash granular soil this is this is lime fly ash granular soil so uh, with long term curing they studied long term curing up to 360 days this this uh, this uh, actually um, performed quite well as compared to the conventional uh, base materials so the phosphogypsum accelerates the reaction between the lime and the fly ash achieving high strength optimum modified lime content is around 8 to 12% binder with the phosphogypsum 23 to 46% have highest 7 day strength for this particular study while highest 20 day strength is achieved when the phosphogypsum is 18 to 23% and uh, you know granular soil is stabilized with the lime pgfa has high long age strength than typical road based materials and therefore in from this study this is a study based in china and it was seen that lime pg and fa binder it can be used as a road based material another study uh, which is quite uh, you know interesting is from poland and uh, this is basically a field study and in this they uh, created a experimental parking lot and uh, in this experimental parking lot they uh, they have this second layer is ash phosphogypsum base so this is phosphogypsum fly ash binder and 60 to 40 to 8 and uh, 
this they they studied they compared both the laboratory studies and uh, the exped, uh, the field study by taking the core specimens you know so uh, in the laboratory they tested the strength after 180 days 360 days and in the experimental parking they took the core after 200 days for the 4490 days the thing is you know the strength in the field obtained from the field uh, is quite higher than the laboratory study and not only this you know they also studied the frost action so they uh, for the laboratory study they had 14 freeze thaw cycles and that, for that they saw that there is a uh, strength is lower quite low but the thing is you know in the field this kind of you know pavement it was uh, uh, or this kind of uh, 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 you know system it was experiencing autumn winter spring season and in poland you know you can imagine the temperature fluctuations are quite high so basically in the field this 1.7 mpa after 200 days and 5.1 mpa after 490 days they are they are actually this strength is after experiencing that extreme climate so it was seen that you know in the field this kind of material it behaved quite better than as the laboratory test why because you know in laboratory test we are only testing this uh, ash phosphor gypsum binder thing but the thing is you know above it you can see that basically this is a whole uh, kind of a, you know um, um, what i will say this is a combined system uh, acting on so uh, uh, the the field uh, the that is why the field studies are important because the field uh, performance may be different from the laboratory performance and in fact they also uh, studied the leaching characteristics of this material of this uh, phosphor gypsum fly ash binder this type of uh, mixture and they found that you know concentration of chromium molybdenum and uh, in fact tds chlorides and ph it they reduced with the uh, months with the time so when the when this uh, with the time the reaction is taking place and you know uh these all these leachate concentrations they came down and they found only the concentration of sulfates it exceeded the limit but uh, uh you know this is this was the paper by the transportation research board it is published in transportation research board and uh, you know a very good um, perspective is given over there in this paper is that you know this we we need to think that this kind of base mixes in the road construction uh are they going to be under direct action of water are they going to be a uh, direct exposed to the environment and if these are not directly exposed to the environment or atmospheric precipitation then maybe this uh, uh, you know this this uh, this uh, the field leachate characteristic may be quite low it may it should be lower than what it is arrived from this kind of data so in summary what we uh, you know i presented today is addition of phosphor gypsum fly ash and cement basically it uh, it was shown that it reduces the plasticity in clays it it improves it brings the improvement in clay type of soils and the maximum dry unit weight of phosphor gypsum stabilized soil increases but when you only add phosphor fly ash then it tend to decrease due to the addition of the fly ash and uh, the addition of the phosphor gypsum may lead to the low early strength because it uh, you know prolongs the setting time of the cement but the participation of the phosphor gypsum it promotes the generation of the chs gel so in long term you will get high strength and uh, when this portland cement it it uh, reacts with the phosphor gypsum then there is this uh, mineral is formed atringite is formed due to the presence of sulfates and this nitrile like atringite and csh gels they produced by the cement and the phosphor gypsum they build the initial framework they build initial framework to stabilize the samples but if it is excess it may also lead to volume expansion and cracks and so it this should be kept in mind when the uh, this particular material is being used for the road construction other thing is the participation of quick lime seems to be quite encouraging and it provides a kind of neutralized environment for these you know pg and uh, um fly ash to react 
and the low activity of fly ash it needs to be activated by phosphogypsum so this kind of mixture seems quite good and uh, in conclusion i will say that from these studies we can say that phosphogypsum in combination with cement fly ash or lime may be used as effective soil stabilizer for soft clays clays of high plasticity expansive soils and low s and uh, i say may because you know for india still we need to do re, uh, more research and uh, i'll come uh, to that thing also and uh, lime pg fa binder may also be used as road waste material so but there are still many questions which still need to be answered and it is like can phosphogypsum be used for black cotton soil stabilization can phosphogypsum be used as embankment material like fly ash uh, and for that we need to think about the durability characteristics drying wetting characteristics like is this material uh, losing its strength when it is wet or it's not and uh, what should be added to the is is pg alone good material or we should as add fly ash to it or even can we use bottom ash or pond ash or pg add mixtures and uh, what should be the leaching characteristics because that is very important uh, not only the strength but the leachability characteristics are important for when when we are using these type of waste materials and what will be the actual field performance so basically uh, one of my phd student uh, is working on this and uh, we have phosphogypsum in our lab you know waiting for it to be tested but unfortunately due to covid uh, we have don't have any substantial results to be presented over here today so that is why i presented the work which is um, across the various countries around the world but uh, maybe in a couple of years uh, i'll uh, will you know my student will be working on this so uh, this is the end of my presentation thank you very much so these are the references and uh, that i took for this um, studies these are quite good studies on the phosphogypsum thank you thank you very much uh, thank you ma'am for uh, for the presentation giving insights on the phosphogypsum uses in uh, terms of soil stabilization and uh, pavement constructions so this uh, is definitely going to help this engineers from mprra so uh, and they might be going to implement it soon so uh, we have a few questions from uh, in chat box uh, okay so uh, what so is I'll okay do... okay yeah i can i can read the questions yes so uh, considering the dry density of the material can it be used in soil as i know such material cannot be used for embankment construction okay so uh, yes we i think it's this, this question was asked around uh, 10:57 am and we saw that it can be used as a soil stabilizer